It's a new season, but it's time to talk about old things, which is Remco winning breaks, winning races solo. This is Volta La Comunità Valenciana, stage one. Remco Evan Apulse put 16 seconds into Vlasov, 31 seconds into the main bunch, which was Carlos Rodriguez. You can see the results here. And I want to go through why people race like idiots with Remco and the numbers he did behind it. So first of all, we'll just go over to Alejandro Valverde's Strava file. Um, here it is. And, you know, it's like a pretty standard stage, 280 normal lives, four hours, like nothing too crazy. It's like, sort of, like really not that hard for these boys, to be honest. Obviously, it's early season, so probably feeling a bit rough. rough. Um, heart rate data is a bit out of whack, but power data looks all good. So, you know, this climb, 310 watts, 4.9 watts per kilo, so sort of zone two, no stress. This climb, again, 13 and a half minutes, 5.5 watts per kilo. It's getting to tempo, but again, no stress at all. This is the sort of last 20 minute climb. Obviously, it's quite steep. Um, well, sort of steeper and then very shallow. 5.8 watts per kilo for 20 minutes. Again, nothing crazy. But if we look into the actual climb itself, um, you'll see it's a little bit more here, like 400 watts for 10 and 11 minutes. So it's like 6.3 for 10. Again, nothing crazy, but not, um, you know, not not the easiest of, uh, of rides. If we go into peak normalize, it's always interesting to see this, where the hard parts of the race are. So you can see the 20 minutes at 384, um, which will be the last part. So all in all, it didn't look too hard. So the question is, what what did the tactics, why why did Remco win? Because in reality, if we look at the, the climb itself, there's no reason why like Remco should necessarily be winning this stage because there was a big group and the climb was done hard, but not crazy hard. Like it's not a seven months per kilo. Now I just think people underestimate Remco because if you look at what happened in the stage, Bahrain paced really hard. Then you've got Movistar on the front, which paced hard and you were like, okay, this is a perfect finish for Valverde. It makes sense. But then Mass attacked. Now, I don't really know why Mass attacked, but he did attack. He put Valverde in difficulty and then everyone else then started attacking, but no one marked Remco. And Remco's there, just like, you're dumb. And he's just waiting in the wheels and then just goes. And the thing with Remco is that he's unlike almost any other climber is that he's aero as. So on the flat, he's faster than anyone. Like he might not have as many watts as people. I think he probably does have more watts than a lot of guys, but he's just so aero. So it just doesn't make any sense. On the finish like this, if you're, if you're a mob star, you just ride threshold and ensure no one can attack. Because as long as you got over the steep part, then if Remco attacks, you're going to be able to follow him. Because to be honest, you can just, you know, surge up to his wheel or whatever, or other people will try and follow him. It's sort of fine. It's only on the steep stuff where obviously if you're trying to defend with Valverde, and if Remco goes, you, you might follow him, but Valverde can't. So again, mob star tactics made no sense. Why do they attack? I don't really know. But the key thing to think about is that if you're a second tier GC contender, so we'll, we'll roll these people up. Like, Bugul Sang, he followed some people early on, um, which made no sense. Like, Mato Mohoric, fair enough, good ride. But like, Luis Leon Sanchez as well, Toll Hook, he attacked. Um, it doesn't make any sense. Why would you attack? Like, Juan Ayuso had an, an, an okay ride, um, but you know, I'm not really looking at them too much, too much. It's more sort of like the top tier GC contenders who, you know, Vlasov, I guess, rode it smart-ish. He tried to follow, but just couldn't. But like, it didn't really make any sense. Like, surely, you should be watching Remco, which is why I think he's like still underestimated, which makes no sense. But if we roll back to a different era, let's say a Chris Froome era, well, often you wouldn't see people attacking that much. You might see Constable go, but you wouldn't see anyone else go. They just wait for the Froome attack and try and follow it because they knew it was gonna come. And I just don't really understand why, like, I know Remco is very strong. Like, I'm not trying to belittle Remco, but all I'm trying to say is I think tactically, people don't seem to really add up that Remco is a different beast to anyone else because he's so good on the flat and he's so good on his own. So if you don't mark him 100% and he gets five meters, he's gone. Like as soon as he went, Vlasov closed a little bit because obviously he was just sprinting like 700 watts trying on his wheel and obviously couldn't sustain it. Got on threshold, done. Thanks for coming. Like just time into him. And then again, like over the top, if you look at um, like Valverde's power data, obviously he was sitting in, but still like 313 watts, 47k an hour. Like you just know... Evanapol's doing probably like 383, 90, 400 in a more aerodynamic position. And he's just gonna be going like 55K an hour on this part, 50K an hour. Like, it's just, there's no worries that Remco's gonna go that quick. So again, it's just a weird stage. And I think it goes to show that people still don't underestimate Remco, which is to their peril because he's won a lot. But I think eventually these guys will start to realize like Enric Mass, that he's worse than Remco. And that if he wants to win these races, he has to follow Remco because otherwise he's just going to get battered. Because Remco put 30 seconds into people. You just can't really see him losing probably that much time on any other stages. Um, so yeah, that, that's my thoughts. Obviously, leave your thoughts below. What do you think? Do you think Remco is just too strong? Do you think people do stupid tactics around him and don't really 
follow him as much as they should do and that people, in my opinion, should think he's the GOAT and literally just follow him and don't attack ever until he goes and then just try and follow him because if you attack before him and you're tired and he goes, it's like game over. Like when he attacked, no one followed him. No one, like Vlasov tried a little bit, but everyone else was already cooked because they'd done all their efforts. And I was just like, what are you all doing? Um, but anyway, cheers for watching. Um, hope you did enjoy the video uh, and uh, hopefully see you for some more content.